Mr. Stewart of Utah. And we have, again, a series of emails we'd like to... Mr. Dearborn. Yes, sir. Stewart of Utah. Present to you and talk through them. If we could, before doing that, could you describe your relationship with Mr. Papadopoulos? Dearborn. I don't believe I had one. Stewart of Utah. Have you met him? Dearborn. I met him in Cleveland. Stewart of Utah. But not previous to that. Dearborn, not to my knowledge. Steward of Utah, you had one interaction in Cleveland. Did you have any personal face-to-face -face interactions with him after that? Dearborn, Cleveland is the only time I remember having a conver... any kind of a brief... It was a brief conversation with him. Is it possible that I had kind of a brief hallway interaction with him? Yes, it is, but I don't believe I had any meetings with Papadopoulos. Steward of Utah. Okay. Dearborn, I had some email exchanges, again, based on his request to travel and have the campaign pay for it. Steward of Utah. And we'll take a look at those here in a moment. So, just so I understand, you had one brief interaction with him face-to-face -face in Cleveland, none before and none since. Dearborn, correct. Steward of Utah, would you describe some of your concerns related to Mr. Papadopoulos' involvement with the campaign, if you had any? Mr. Dearborn, so like Carter, he was brought in by Sam. I didn't know the guy. He kept saying he wanted to do all this travel and represent the campaign. We didn't have the budget for it. To me, it was a simple kind of open and shut case. We don't have the money to send you. That's not your role. Sorry, I'm not going to improve it. Mr. Stewart of Utah. I believe you have an email before you that is labeled a long list of numbers. I'm not going to read them for you. Dearborn, that's fine. Steward of Utah, but I think we have the same one before us. Dearborn, okay, yes, sir. Steward of Utah, and this is where he requested, number one, in reading the body of his text, if the campaign can reimburse my travel expenses accommodations to D.C. for a high-level meeting with the director of Israel National Security Council, request to meet with me next week when he is in town. And then your response to him is? Dearborn, my response to him? Steward of Utah, yes. Quote, let's discuss... Unquote. Dearborn, I think I sent that to John Mashburn. Steward of Utah, yes, that's right. Dearborn, so I didn't respond to Papadopoulos. I just said, I said to John, who ran the policy shop where J.D. kind of reported up through. I said, and I just told him I wasn't inclined to approve any of that. Steward of Utah. Okay, and again, could you describe why you wouldn't have been inclined to improve that? Mr. Dearborn. Well, we didn't have the budget for it. I didn't think it was the guy's role, and he wasn't authorized. Mr. Steward of Utah. Okay, let's turn to one more, if we could. Dearborn. Sure. Steward of Utah. This is the last five numbers are 18843. Dearborn, okay. Steward of Utah, I'm sorry, 22918. Dearborn, right, got it. Steward of Utah, just glancing over this, I'll give you a moment to look at it, if you could. Could you give us a background on this email? Dearborn, it looks... So this now looks as if I've discussed it with John 
from the prior email and then responded directly back to George, letting him know that I'm happy if he wants to talk to somebody as a private citizen, but he's not authorized by the campaign, nor is he going to be reimbursed by the campaign. Steward of Utah, okay, are you aware of any time after this email exchange where that relationship between Mr. Papadopoulos and the campaign changed? Dearborn, no, I think it was consistent. There may be more emails where he was asking to travel and have the campaign pay for it, and we just kept telling him no. Steward of Utah, are you aware of any time that you reimbursed him for his travel? Dearborn, not a one. Steward of Utah, did he ever come on and become a paid consultant or advisor on the campaign? Mr. Dearborn, no. As a matter of fact, I say we're not looking to bring members of our external working group in-house, so I made that clear to him. Mr. Stewart of Utah, and that didn't change? Dearborn, not to my knowledge, no. Stewart of Utah, how would you describe his role in the campaign? If he wasn't paid, he wasn't reimbursed for expenses. Key people had very little interactions with him to no personal interactions with him. How would you describe his relationship with the campaign then? Dearborn, a volunteer that attended one meeting that wanted to travel and had no access to the candidate other than the one meeting. Steward of Utah, and were there other people like this as you came across in your, throughout the interactions of the campaign? 11.59 a.m. Mr. Dearborn, I would say the National Security Working Group, the bulk of them could fit the same definition. Mr. Stewart of Utah, yeah. So most of us in the room have had, you know, we've had our own campaigns or managed campaigns, and you meet lots of people. Mr. Dearborn, of course, Mr. Stewart of Utah, and a lot of people would like to be involved with the campaign, but for various reasons, you don't bring all of them on. You bring a few of them on. Dearborn, right. Steward of Utah, where would you put Mr. Papadopoulos on that scale of someone that you wanted to have representing the campaign or being involved with the campaign? Dearborn, an interested party that J.D. Gordon would talk to from time to time. Steward of Utah, okay. I'd like to turn your attention to one more email, if we could. And I think this will probably wrap up some of our interactions with Mr. Papadopoulos, as far as I know. This is labeled the last four digits again, 18843. Dearborn, yes, sir. Steward of Utah, I'll give you a chance to review that, if you could, and while you do, I'm going to highlight one portion, if we could. Dearborn, okay. Steward of Utah, this is from Mr. Papadopoulos. He asks if you go back to the last page there. Was told by a couple of folks in the campaign, Rick Dearborn, Sam Clovis, that I was effectively now off the campaign because I gave an interview on U.S. policy in the Middle East towards Russia. And then over on page, and you'll have to forgive me. Dearborn, that's fine. Steward of Utah, some of my pages are cut off. It's the second page from the top, and I believe this is from you, Mr. Dearborn. You said I've met him once. He had a Carter Page problem. He goes and meets with folks, expresses his views, and then is tagged by the press as our guy. He's been told several times to cease and desist, as I understand it. Would you elaborate and give some context to this exchange? Mr. Dearborn, yeah. 
So it looks like he's saying he was authorized to speak for the campaign. I didn't believe that he was. I never believed that he was. Carter Page had the same problem, and they both went and met with folks, expressed their views, said that they were somehow connected to the campaign. And we had to tell them on several occasions that that's not their role and they should stop because they weren't authorized to do so. Mr. Stewart of Utah. So when he says, I was told I was effectively now off the campaign, what is his understanding of that? Do you think? Did he view himself as being on the campaign? Or do you know, Mr. Dearborn? You'd have, Mr. Dearborn, you'd have to ask him that. I mean, I really don't know. Steward of Utah, uh-huh. And then finally, on the first page, he's been told several times to steer clear of representing the campaign, if need be. Dearborn, yes. Mr. Steward of Utah, I can communicate with him these issues. That's in quotes. Dearborn, Mr. Dearborn, right. Steward of Utah, okay, any context or elaboration on that? Dearborn, no, just that, if you can see, I said, quote, Sam, you know him, yes? Unquote, because he was one of Sam's guys. Steward of Utah, yeah. Dearborn, so we would turn to Sam so that hopefully Sam could talk to the guy. Steward of Utah, okay. And how did he take that? Do you know? Dearborn, Sam would know. Steward of Utah, okay. Dearborn, I wouldn't really know. Steward of Utah, and did you have any interactions with Mr. Papadopoulos after these email exchanges here? Or, I know you haven't had direct interactions with him, but are you aware of any other email exchanges? Or did that seem to terminate his relationship with the campaign? Dearborn, not other than the ones that I provided or that you may have through the campaign account. And I think they were all pretty much the same thing, tied to travel and wanting to do things and speak and, yeah. Steward of Utah, okay. One of the other concerns that, you know, have arisen from our questioning in this course, in the course of this investigation, is this proposed Kremlin back channel between members of the campaign or some of those surrounding the president or the candidate at the time. And again, we're, growing, we're going to provide you with some emails that will give some of this a little bit of context. Can you describe by telling us do you know Paul Erickson and your relationship with him, if there is one? Mr. Dearborn, I don't have a relationship with him. I have met him in person and then had several email exchanges with him, predominantly about his desire to join the transition. That's how I first met him. Steward of Utah, you didn't have interactions with him in the campaign portion. Dearborn, it may have been during the campaign and prior to the transition that he asked to be part of the transition. But I don't believe from a campaign standpoint. I think he was more interested in the transition, if I remember right. Steward of Utah, okay, have you met Paul Erickson? Dearborn, I met him one time. He came to Senator Sessions' office to introduce himself. Steward of Utah, and do you recall when? Dearborn, it seemed early on. It could have been February, March, April. Steward of Utah, okay, did you sit in on that meeting where he introduced himself to Senator Sessions? Dearborn, I don't remember that, no. Mr. Caulfield, I'm sorry, Congressman. Can I just clarify? Steward of Utah, yes. Caulfield, 
Are you saying that he came to introduce himself to you or to introduce himself to Senator Sessions? Mr. Dearborn, he came into the Sessions office to introduce himself to me. Mr. Stewart of Utah, okay, okay, thank you. Dearborn, I'm so sorry, yeah. Stewart of Utah, I misunderstood, all right. Dearborn, and I said hello to him. He talked about how important a transition is and how he knew everything there was to know about transitions. I thanked him for that. He left some chart, organizational chart, about how a transition would work. And that was that. Steward of Utah, and how long about did that meeting last? Dearborn, it was like a stand-up meeting. Steward of Utah. Okay, a few minutes. Dearborn, I didn't really know what he was coming to talk about. I was just, as chief of staff, if someone wanted to see me, I was always accessible. Quote, hey, there's a fellow up here that wants to see you. Can you come up front? Question mark, unquote. And then, quote, sure, unquote. Steward of Utah, okay, so if you could, I'd like to reference another email, 00078. Dearborn, okay, steward of Utah, and I'll give you a chance to review it if you could. Dearborn, okay, and this appears to be from Mr. Erickson to you. Dearborn, right, right. Steward of Utah, is this email familiar to you? Dearborn, I may have seen it before, I'm sure, when I've gone through searches to find and provide the information and, I'm sure, when I first received it. Steward of Utah, okay, can you give us the context of this email? Dearborn, let me see here. Yeah, I think it's straightforward. It looks like he's trying to connect and build a relationship between Putin and Trump, and he's letting me know about it. Steward of Utah, okay, and do you recall if you did reply to Mr. Erickson at this point? Dearborn, I don't remember ever responding to it. Steward of Utah, okay, because from what we can tell from emails we've received, we don't have any, we don't have a record of you responding. Dearborn, yeah, I don't think I would have responded to it. Steward of Utah, why would you not have responded to this? Dear, Dearborn, because I got all kinds of email requests from a myriad of different people about every issue under the sun. Steward of Utah, okay. Dearborn, and I didn't necessarily respond to those either. Steward of Utah, would you say you get dozens of such emails? Dearborn, oh, I'd say more than dozens. Steward of Utah, hundreds? Dearborn, yes. Steward of Utah, maybe more? Dearborn, maybe. I mean, if they find out, if they can find you and send you an email and think that you are connected to a presidential campaign, everybody, good people have ideas about things and they'd like to run them by you. Mr. Stewart of Utah, yeah, okay, so ag again, to Mr. Dearborn, and some bad ideas, so, Stewart of Utah, yeah, to the best of your recollection, you did not reply to Mr. Dearborn, to this email, Dearborn, to Mr. Erickson, Stewart of Utah, or Mr. Erickson, I'm sorry, Dearborn, no, sir, I don't believe I did, Stewart of Utah, okay, a couple more if we could. Dearborn, sure. Steward of Utah, let's look at one labeled 00035. Dearborn, okay. Steward of Utah, this is from an individual. Rick Clay, can you describe your relationship with him or how you know him, if you do? Dearborn, so I don't have a relationship with him, but a blanked out. Uh, called me and said that the senator 
had a constituent that was really interested in the campaign and wanted to be helpful, and could I call the guy? And so I called him. And this email was the follow-up to that call. Stewart of Utah. Okay, and can you synopsize for us kind of the content of this email and your reply to him? Dearborn. Yeah, he called and he started walking through all kinds of information. And it was on a Saturday. But if I remember, I had things to do. So I just said, quote, Hey, do you mind putting all this in an email and sending it to me and let me take a look at it? Unquote. So then what you see here is him doing all of that. And I think he's asking to put together a meeting with the individuals that he lists with regards to President Putin and Mr. Trump. Stu- Mr. Stewart of Utah. Okay. I'd like to, in combination with these, so don't necessarily put that one aside, but call your attention to 0034 as well. Mr. Dearborn, okay. Stewart of Utah, and are you familiar with this email? Dearborn, yes. Stewart of Utah, and once again, can you give us context of this email that he sent to you? Dearborn, I think he was just trying to follow up. I don't believe I did anything with this. He sent me a picture of his truck. It was a good-looking truck. I let him know it was a good-looking truck. Steward of Utah, okay, important issues there. And then finally, 00001, Dearborn, okay, yep, Steward of Utah. And I think this, well, I'll let you characterize, Mr. Dearborn, sure. Mr. Stewart of Utah, reading this, and if you could, tell us the content of this email and with regard to Rick Clay. Dearborn, yeah, so it was a senator's constituent. They had this request. I was dubious of it to begin with. I checked a box to send it up. I got the response I expected, which was, as you can see, what Jared sent back to me. And I just responded by saying, thanks a lot. I was responding to the senator and then mentioned, because we had some meetings we were setting up with members of Congress, that it may be possible that the senator would raise this constituent and the request, or at least the email with Manafort when we met. But she didn't, so? Mr. Stewart of Utah, okay. And in this last exchange, you say, for now, I think we declined such meetings, unquote. Do you see that in the first line? Dearborn, in this one? Steward of Utah, it's in 0001. Dearborn, yeah, that was Mr. Kushner's response to me. Steward of Utah, yeah, and did you concur with that? Dearborn, I did. I was looking for him to hopefully agree with me, that that's what we needed to do. Steward of Utah, yeah, and so you didn't press for any further meetings. Dearborn, absolutely not. Steward of Utah, or think that that was a good idea or necessary. Dearborn, that's right. Steward of Utah, okay, anything else that you can tell us about Rick Clay, your relationship with him, his interactions with the campaign. Dearborn, there are very energetic people in this country, and they're amazing. This guy emailed me. Once he got my email address, he became a constant one-way pen pal. (laughs) Forever. Mr. Stewart of Utah, yeah, all right. Mr. Dearborn, so he'll probably always track me down and send me interesting emails. Steward of Utah, and pictures of his truck. Dearborn, and great pictures of his truck. Right. Steward of Utah, okay. All right, how much time? Blank, you have about 23 minutes, sir. Steward of Utah, okay. A couple more, if we could. If you would look at 00018. 
Dearborn. Okay, Steward of Utah, I'll give you time to look at it, if you would, please. And then, again, tell us the context of this email. Dearborn, okay, so this is from our field rep in Huntsville, Alabama. It looks like one of our constituents who knows Mr. Clay had talked to him and had run this same request up through her. She let me know. And I was just giving her a short reply to let her know that, yep, I've already dealt with it. It's been handled. Steward of Utah. Okay, and no meetings came from this. No further communications. Dearborn. Nope, no. Steward of Utah. Okay. And then last one. I believe 0029. I misspoke. We have one more after this, but... Dearborn, that's fine. Mr. Stewart of Utah, again, we kind of throw these at you. I want to give you a little time to look at it and try to remember and digest it. Mr. Dearborn, yes, sir. Stewart of Utah, it, you know, appears that Mr. Clay continued to push. Dearborn, right. Steward of Utah, and there's an interesting line in here where, well, there's several interesting lines. I'd maybe highlight a few of them for you. If you look back on page 31, I'm just going to read through a couple of par couple parts. Dearborn, sure. Steward of Utah, and ask you to respond to them if you could. Quote, he called my good friend about Trump and Putin. My friend did not disclose any info on the overture that I sent you several months ago, but was intrigued by his comments. Unquote. Dearborn, I'm sorry you lost me. On 31? Question mark. Steward of Utah, yeah. Dearborn, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Steward of Utah, okay. And then turning back to page 30. Quote, Rick, I ran this up, unquote, about mid-page. Quote, I ran this up the chain a while back, and there was an interest in pursuing. This hasn't changed, to my knowledge, unquote. Dearborn, uh-huh, right? And at the top of that page, apologies, Rick. I'm slammed and just trying my best to juggle commitments, unquote. Page 59. Mr. Dearborn, right, Mr. Stewart of Utah, and you could continue to read through this. I mean, it seems to me that this individual is persuasive or determined. Dearborn, persistent, Stewart of Utah, persistent, thank you. Dearborn, yes, sir. Steward of Utah, and determined. And yet, how did you respond to his determined efforts? Dearborn, in the nicest possible way I could, just to tell him, quote, thanks, but this has already been handled. We have a lot of other things that we're dealing with, unquote. I didn't want to offend him. He was a member of Congress constituent. I'm not in the business of offending people. I just tried to, as nice as I could, just kind of let him down and say, we're moving on. Steward of Utah, never indicated any interest in pursuing conversations with him. Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah, did you take seriously his proposition that he could facilitate some type of communication or back channel. Dearborn, I thought it was highly unlikely that, though a good man from West Virginia, that a fellow from West Virginia was going to be able to connect a presidential candidate with the president of Russia. Steward of Utah, is there any reason that you would have ever believed that he was capable of doing that? Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah, do you still believe that now, that
that he was unable to do that. Mr. Dearborn, I still believe that. Mr. Stewart of Utah, uh-huh. Do you know anyone who saw this exchange who took that possibility seriously? Dearborn, no, sir. Stewart of Utah. And then on the last one, which is 0062, it appears Mr. Dearborn attempts one more time. Quote, just a reminder, the back channel to Putin is still open, unquote. Dearborn, right. Stewart of Utah. And once again, anything you would elaborate on that in this last exchange? Dearborn, I think this was probably one of or close to the last exchange that he had. I don't even know if I responded to this. I felt like I'd addressed it multiple times. Steward of Utah, yeah, and apparently you didn't respond to this. So kind of in its totality, did you ever at any time see a realistic back channel by any individuals, Mr. Clay or anyone else, to facilitate a back channel between Mr. Putin and anyone associated with the campaign? Mr. Dearborn, no. Mr. Stewart of Utah, did you ever have any meetings or phone calls regarding that? Dearborn, no. Stewart of Utah, would you have supported such a thing? Were, you, were that, you know, you look at this one and say, well, it's not necessarily viable. But if there were a viable option for it, would that have been something that you would have thought was a good idea and would have supported? Dearborn, me? Personally, no. But, I mean, it should have been the candidate's. It's the candidate's decision if he wants to do that. Steward of Utah, yeah, and it's not something that you encouraged. Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah, we've talked about this very briefly, or at least in passing. Mr. Trump Jr. met with some, at least one Russian official, or, I'm sorry, someone associated, Alex Torshin. Are you familiar with Alex? Dearborn, I'm not familiar with him. Steward of Utah, are you familiar at all with this meeting at the NRA, this interaction? Dearborn, I'm not familiar with the meeting. It may have been reported that there were. I can't remember what the deal was, if the meeting happened or not. I don't believe it did, but I'm not sure. Steward of Utah, so you didn't help to arrange that meeting. Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah had no knowledge of it. Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah, at the time or previous. Dearborn, no. Steward of Utah, okay. All right, let me ask the other members if there's any other questions from our side. Mr. Conway, Peter, Mr. King, no questions. Mr. Stewart of Utah, Chairman, Mr. Conway, nope. Mr. Stewart of Utah, all right. Mr. Conway, do you need a break? Mr. Dearborn, I could use the facility, yeah? Yes, sir. Mr. Conway, we'll take a five-minute break and then resume questioning. Recess. <laughs>